Welcome to the Potter Blog site. It's Monday, October the 10th, 2011. I am confirming and reissuing a maximum alert for persistent radioactive fallout in the St. Louis area or anywhere in North America, the rain coming from the jet stream. And the immediate advice is that after a rainstorm, decontaminate vehicles before parking in your garage. And by this, I mean car wash. And let me give you the reason. I'll try to keep this video short. If you need more information and more detail, I suggest you go to the uh, Potter Blog site and go through the site and look up the information. The issue comes from uh, persistent long half-life fallout data in a, uh, a sample we collected after a 12-hour rainstorm on September 14th. Uh, the sample was uh, kept in a, a large Ziploc bag. Uh, when we originally took this sample back on September 14th, almost 30 days ago, um, we detected some short half-life fallout, which was uh, uh, from radon daughters. We also detected longer half-life fallout, which uh, we suspected is uh, Neptunium-239. Uh, Neptunium-239 turns into uh, Plutonium-239, it's got a, a two-day half-life. Well, this today, what I've done is I've rechecked this original sample that we took on 914 uh, to see if I could still detect some radioactivity in it. And lo and behold, I was able to detect radioactivity still in it. Now what we have here is a 11-hour period, and each one of these points represents a 90-second uh, average in uh, counts per second. And this is above background. So what I've done is I've taken two samples. Uh, I've taken the, uh, a reading from the test sample and a reading from background and subtracted the two to come up with these values. And I'll show you this real quick. Here is our background reading. And if you can see here, I started this uh, close to midnight on uh, October 9th, which was yesterday. And it ran up pretty much through uh, this afternoon on October 10th. And again, what these are are 90-second averages. So it'd take a 90-second count and report the average counts per second. Again, this is all background radiation. Uh, this black line is a, uh, a linear fit, and you can see it's relatively flat, which means is that uh, background average in this time period was level, despite the, the noise in here. And it's right around uh, 0.5 counts per second, or that would be approximately uh, 30 counts per minute. Now, with this, now that we have these background values, at the same time, I took a uh, reading from uh, a sample that we collected on 914. And again, same uh, situation, uh, 90 second average values. Uh, readings were taken on 1010. And you can see how they vary here. And these values here include background radiation. So this is the reading from the sample plus the inherent background variation. And this red line here is a linear fit of this data. And you can see here it starts out at 0.6 and it drops off a little bit. So there's a little bit of decline here. But uh, because of the uh, nature of this fit, yeah, there is some sensitivity to it. But uh, again, the average here is roughly 0.6, whereas if we look at the previous background average, we have 0.5. Now what I've done is Point for point, I've subtracted out the two to uh, come up with the actual readings above background. So if this were all just noise and the sample was no longer radioactive, this line would be, this noise would be randomly centered around zero. So you'd see a random center around zero. And Instead, what we have is that there's a positive shift here up to 0.1 counts per second, indicating that uh, the sample is still radioactive. 
And if you notice also, there's a decline here. There's a more noticeable decline here. We start off here almost at 0.1. We come down here, I think, to like 0.07 something. But again, because of the uh, nature of this fit, this overall decline is just sort of a, a ballpark figure. Uh, this works out to decay rate within uh, over this 12-hour period. And again, this is actually this 11-hour period uh, works out to be roughly some sort of fallout with a uh, fallout period and half-life in terms of days. But again, this is uh, highly sensitive because of the uh, variability. But the key thing is, is this line's above zero, so approximately. 26 days after this fallout, this rain fell here in St. Louis, the sample that's been sitting in a, a sealed Ziploc bag this entire time is still radioactive. And it appears as if there's more than one radioactive contaminant in here, but I can't say for certain because uh, you know, there's a lot of noise to signal in here. And you can see the variability was. 30 counts per minute and the actual radioactivity we're getting out of this sample is on the order of 6 counts per minute. So it's a little difficult to tie down the exact half-life from, uh, from this data. But the key thing is, is we have persistent long half-life fallout in St. Louis. I strongly suspect that this fallout to be primarily Neptunium-239 which turns into Plutonium-239 and which is near impossible to detect with the Geiger counter unless there's massive amounts. Uh, there have been some other people on the, the Potter blog website who've done some analysis and they suspect uh, that the fallout might be yttrium which is a decay product of uh, strontium but uh, that is a less likely fit because the rest of the data doesn't support it because we don't really see any strong indication of, strong, of uh, strontium in that case, it would have to be just primarily uh, uh, yttrium without it, with little strontium present. And that's more difficult to explain than uh, neptunium-239, which has been detected in large quantities in Japan and is uh, directly formed from uh, short half-life uranium. So again, the key takeaway is maximum alert. If you bring items into your home that are wet or contaminated, especially a large car sitting in your garage, you're going to pull fallout into your house. And if it is neptunium, then you're pulling, when it decays, it'll decay into plutonium. And you will be pulling plutonium into your house. So it's a risk mitigation alert. Take precautions. Good night.